So we've all seen holograms in museums and gift shops. Uh, they look beautiful, but we still can't go to the electronics store and buy that holographic television. So the question is, why hasn't that happened yet? Well, one of the main reasons is that a holographic television will require pixels many times smaller than what we can manufacture even for our best mobile phones today. And so what we're trying to do in our laboratory at MIT is develop a 3D display technology that uses today's dominant display technology, which is liquid crystal panels, uh, in a way that can create a beautiful 3D scene like a hologram. As we move from two-dimensional displays to hyper-realistic multi-dimensional displays for 3D, for light fields, for multispectral and lighting aware displays, the bandwidth requirements move from gigabytes per second to terabytes per second. But by using compressive displays, we can exploit compression not just in software, but also in optics and bring those bandwidth requirements within manageable limits. So what's our secret sauce? Well, if you look at the natural 3D world, uh, say a white wall, it turns out as you move your head back and forth, that wall doesn't really change. And so what we do is we take compression algorithms, like you'd have in your digital camera on our DVD or Blu-ray. We look at the world, we identify these redundancies, and as a result, we can actually use liquid crystal panels with those large pixels uh, to create beautiful 3D scenes that almost reach the quality of holograms today. Here, the prototype is assembled in the directional backlight configuration. The front LCD layer sits atop a directional backlight, which is obscured while assembled. The LCD driver electronics are mounted with the panel on an aluminum plate. The plate is accurately positioned using a rail and clip system. From the side, the location of the directional backlight, composed of a uniform backlight, LCD, and lenses, can be more clearly seen behind the front LCD. Because of the close layer spacing allowed by the directional backlight design, our two-layer prototype has retained the thin form factor of an unmodified LCD panel. We now compare to the three-layer tensor display prototype. In this configuration, three LCD layers are illuminated by a uniform backlight. We choose a larger layer spacing to demonstrate the flexibility of the tensor framework and to avoid more interference without the need for custom holographic diffusers. Displayed 3D images are perceived without any flickering, but when filmed with a high-speed camera, the temporally varying tensor decompositions are clearly visible for each of the three layers. So I think with new research, you always want to ask, why is this relevant now? And for us, we're taking advantage of two big trends in display hardware and graphics hardware. So the first is really high-speed display panels. And this lets us uh, show a bunch of frames that your eye adds up together as a single coherent image. The other trend we're taking advantage of is really high-speed graphics hardware. So the, the chips that go into your laptop, your phone, or your desktop PC have become so fast in the last five years that we can solve a whole complex computational problem in the time it takes to show just one frame of video. And this has enabled a whole new way of thinking about 3D display.